Hello everyone, it's History Behind the Warrior, and as always, welcome back to another Mortal Kombat video. Now, originally, I didn't actually plan on making this video at all, but seeing as the ideas of it kind of formed in my mind following the previous Missing Of episode, the more I looked into it and analysed it, the more sense it began to make to me. Honestly, once I started to piece together the picture, it might really surprise you just how overlooked the possibility of Scarlet's return in the new era. Now please do keep in mind, this is all a theory crafted video. I'm simply taking the tools and ideas established in the current continuity and seeing how I can bend and craft them from previous established concepts in prior continuity. As whilst MK1 is in many ways a fresh slate for the series, it's inherently one built on the foundation of two prior timelines, as well as a multitude of different ideas, ones that still continue to ripple in the new present, just done in a very fresh and different manner. So that is what we will primarily focus on today's video. So first off, Let's start talking about Scarlet, and the Crimson Ninja has always been a particularly strange one in the fandom. Having made her official debut in MK9, she would actually be a figure introduced outside of the game's story mode, strictly confined to that of DLC. And because of this, she would be given a rather flimsy origin. And I use flimsy for a reason, as it would actually be altered later down the line. Introduced as a child born from Shao Kahn's bloodshed, Scarlet would be the physical amalgamation of thousands of bodies crushed beneath the Emperor's boots. Yet, instead of letting this go to waste, he would take this bloodshed and quite literally combine it into one physical being. Scarlet was the ultimate last resort trump card of Shao as she was a fierce warrior, but one that needed to be shackled, as due to the nature of her creation, she was not one so easily controlled. As once drenched in the blood of her enemies, Scarlet would be prone to drive herself into a bloodlusted frenzy, as she could absorb their very being through her skin. Pretty cool, right? Well, unfortunately, this would all be retconned in Mortal Kombat 11. Stripped of her flesh amalgamated origin, as well as her unique ability of blood absorption, in 11, her origin would be that of an outworld orphan, presumably in the same fashion he adopted Jade and Katana. By growing up by his side, Scarlet would be molded into a formidable blood witch, developing a strong sense of loyalty to him and shedding tyranny in his name. So, could this all translate into the new era? Well, let's address the big elephant in the room here. Shao Kahn, or now known as General Shao. With his demotion in rank, as well as status of this realm, I'm not entirely sure if Shao would be the right pick here for the Blood Witch. Whilst, yes, he has gone and adopted the likes of Reiko, the Shao of this era specialises more in the physicality of combat than one of magic, let alone blood magic. Keep in mind that one of the reasons how and why Shao was as talented or as strong as he was would be due to his merging of the realms. Here, with Outworld living as a collective and not merged under one person's rule, we kind of see the restraints on him reflected in a very different manner. And with Reiko as an example, or at the very least, someone we can compare her to, their styles of combat are completely different. Thus, I don't think that Shao, whilst the obvious choice here, would be the one responsible for Scarlet's creation. In fact, I think the seeds for this character have already been planted and scattered right in front of our eyes. So who would be the most viable contender? Well, that is where Quan Chi comes into play. The malevolent sorcerer of this timeline kind of fills in that gap of the dark arts Shao left behind, with Omak being the perfect and prime example of this. So it does show that he's fully capable of granting and creating life here. But I don't think the limitations stop strictly with Ermac. And from what you can tell and I'm suggesting, is that if Scarlet is to return in the new era, I don't just think that Quan is the right man to do it, but I think we can actually go back to her original origin from MK9, 
But such a creation would require a large blood sacrifice, right? Well, again, you would be correct. And I do think we've met the perfect hosts for such a being. As during the course of the game's story mode, we are introduced to a number of different allies to Quan. Havoc, Shang Tsung, Darius, and Natara to say a few. But there's actually one that's continuously overlooked throughout the entire game. And that is the Acolyte, bound and brainwashed to follow his side. This sisterhood of Shadow would follow his every whim and call, being to him merely dispensable figures that would aid him in his siege. Although they do not play a pivotal piece in Quan's character, they are a faction who appear quite frequently throughout the game and do aid in his quest for power. Even so, by the end of the narrative, where Titan Shang appears and the Deadly Alliance is crumbled, they would have technically failed in Quan Chi's rise to power. And I would imagine in Quan's eyes, because of this, they may have outlived their usefulness. And as seen by the end of the game's story, in Ashura's arcade ladder ending, we learn that it's actually possible to be freed from his grasp, as Serena is released from his snare. So at that point, in his eyes, I would imagine that they are now expendable. And we kind of get an idea of how desperate things have become, as he would attempt to regain control of Ermac's collective, only to then be shaken off by him. So now seeking a new puppet, I believe that's where Scarlet comes into play. With his servants now being susceptible to having their ties cut to him, I firmly believe that whatever remained of this sisterhood would be harvested for the creation of Scarlet. But now I hear you say, how would he do that? Wouldn't he need some kind of powerful resource to produce such life? And you would actually be correct. Tying back to the arcade ladder ending of Quan Chi, once he retreats back to his fortress in the Neverrealm, in the backdrop, we would actually see that his fortress is the same one from Mortal Kombat X. You know, the same one with the flesh pit. So in this timeline and era, I could 100% see the origin for Scarlet being extremely similar to that of her nine counterparts. And I think with all of these ideas, changes, and alterations, it all absolutely makes so much more sense if she was to be created by Quan Chi. So kind of like how the living forest was harvested for the creation of Ermac, I believe his acolytes would be the vessel needed to create her. As for how this could work or translate in terms of character dynamic and relationship, that's kind of hard to know or analyze. You see, oddly enough, these two have kind of actively avoided each other in the mainline canon, because due to her status as DLC in 9, she was never a part of the game's base story. And with Quan's final appearance in the reboot's timeline being MKX, it means that she just misses him in 11. So from X onwards, we do actually miss a ton of unique dialogues and intros between the two. The only time these two have ever interacted with each other would be in her own arcade ladder ending, where she would kill Quan Chi for setting her on Shao Kahn. So I think a really smart and interesting idea where Quan Chi has to feed her to keep her in check and cleanse her of her bloodlusted frenzy. So the two would create a very bitter symbiotic relationship. As for story arc and how that could unravel, well, understandably that all largely depends on the larger greater narrative of the sequel. I do definitely believe though, that framing her as this tragic homunculus trapped under Quan Chi's thumb paints her in a very interesting light, as she's forced to kill for him to feed. It creates a very temperamental, fragile relationship that's essentially built on hunger and resentment. One that could eventually boil over and have her turn on him. And if you really wanted to have a callback to the previous timelines, you could always reincorporate this idea of their alliance crumbling and her hunting him across the realms. Kind of in a similar fashion to how Scorpion transversed the realms, hunting him on every material plane. So from what you can tell, the ideas and ingredients for this character are scattered, but do most definitely exist in the present. It's just literally right in front of our eyes here. I can only hope that in some way or some form, that she does return in this manner, 
as there's tons of great ideas and concepts within the canon that they can reintroduce and can repackage. They are honestly only limited by their imagination here. And with Scarlet's continuity having fluctuated from 9 to 11, I do think an idea like this is the best of both worlds, which is a homunculus beast prone to bloodlusted rages, while simultaneously being in touch with blood magic from serving under Quan Chi. You really get to lean into both elements of the character. So with that said, and all of the ideas presented here, what are your thoughts on them? And how would you like to see Scarlet return into Mortal Kombat 1, being reintroduced for the new era? Please do comment down below, as I really do love reading your ideas and suggestions. But for now everyone, that's been it for me. So as always, take care, and I'll catch you in the next one.